Hey, it's Chris, and today I'm gonna let you guys know what my mobile shooting rig setup looks like. I posted a picture on Instagram a while back and on Twitter, and everyone was like, can you please make a video about that? So this is that video. It's not a normal video. It's not about Apple or the other kind of tech that I usually cover, but it's still pretty interesting. So if you're interested in camera stuff, then you're gonna love this. If you're interested in just like behind the scenes and how things work here on the channel, then you're also gonna love this. So when I'm talking about a mobile rig, what I'm really talking about is something that I'm using outside of the studio. So I don't want something that's heavy, so I don't lug my big camera around. What I do is look for something really portable that still gives me good video quality, good audio quality, and sound lighting. Hey, Future Chris here, breaking in real quick because I'm starting to edit and I see or hear that there's some wind noise with the mic. And so yeah, I totally forgot to equip this set up out that day with the Video Mic Pro Plus Dead Cat, the thing that muffles the wind. So I'm gonna link that up down below. That's obviously something that you're gonna want too. And this probably sounds windy too. And I know it's gonna be so windy. Back to the video. This rig is actually exactly what I'm gonna be using to cover at WWDC in just like a week or something, in a few days. So when you see that video, when you see me at WWDC, you can know this is what I've got that I'm taking around and covering that show with. So in this video, I'm mostly gonna be talking about the DJI Osmo Pocket and the accessories that I use to rig it up when I'm outside of the studio. I'm also gonna mention some of my other portable cameras that I bring with me just to get a variety of different shots. And I'm gonna talk about the bags that I pack everything up in. Of course, I'm gonna link everything up down in the description for you guys. So if there's something you're interested in, you can check that out and make it real easy to buy. So why the Osmo Pocket? Like why is that what I settled on to go with me when I'm going everywhere. Well, first of all, have you ever seen this thing? It's tiny, it's absolutely minuscule. So taking it with you is like a no brainer. The one bad thing is that the sensor size is a little bit small, but the trade off is completely worth it. It shoots in 4K, it shoots 4K 60 actually. So if you wanna get some slow-mo action in, you can, but you can notice as I'm moving around, it just tracks my face really easily. And it, it looks like you have got a cameraman like with you, but you don't. It's just the camera, the AI, and the face tracking. I mean, it's, it's great. I can go over here, I can go over here, and it's just gonna follow me. So, number one, that is what I like about it. So when I am outside the studio, when I'm traveling and I'm relying just on this Osmo Pocket, then you might be wondering about the battery life. Well, the battery life is actually pretty good because the main thing that I use this for is the A-roll, or just talking to the camera, like I'm doing right now. That's what we call the A-roll. The B-roll is the stuff that you see layered on top of the talking, all the cutaways, all the product stuff. Um, so for the A-roll, I'm just using the pocket. And that usually takes me like 45 minutes to an hour to shoot the A-roll. And by the time I'm done, the pocket still has a ton of battery left. I could probably shoot two videos, two A-roll talking segments with just one charge on the Osmo Pocket. There's three other cameras that I like to bring with me, small cameras, when I'm outside the studio to help me get some other shots. The first one, and you've seen a lot of shots from this uh, recently is the Insta360 One X. It's a 360 cam, it shoots in 5K, but by the time you crop in, then you're really getting uh, a lot less resolution. And the resolution isn't that great, but the thing is, it lets you get shots that you just can't get otherwise. Super convenient, love taking it with me when I'm shooting indoors, um, just film everything and then just reframe it later. Um, outdoors is perfect. It's really an amazing versatile camera. The other camera that I just got in the mail yesterday that's gonna go with me everywhere is the DJI Osmo Action. And this is sort of like DJI's take on the GoPro. You've probably seen a ton of different videos if you're into camera stuff comparing those two, the Hero 7 and the Osmo Action. Really love this thing because it has a forward-facing camera, or a forward, of course it has a forward-facing camera. It has a forward-facing screen. And so if you're trying to shoot yourself, you can hold it out and actually see what you're doing. Make sure that you're framed up right and it's rugged, it's waterproof. So if it's gonna start raining or something, I can switch over to that, not worry about it. That one is going to be clutch, especially with the Rocksteady stabilization. The Osmo Pocket obviously has really great stabilization, but that Rocksteady stabilization, if you're gonna be running, sometimes I'm testing like headphones or something, right? And you gotta be running and you don't want it to look all shaky, that's perfect for something like the Osmo Action. Of course, the other camera that I always have with me is the iPhone XR. And I have my regular iPhone, 
and that's the iPhone XS Max. And then I have the iPhone XR, which is sort of just like a dedicated video camera. It's got all the apps for all my various cameras, including my Lumix GH5, and just kind of is the brains for the whole operation. But if I'm running out of power on any of my other cameras, or if I wanna use my Moment lenses, which I highly recommend, those are awesome. I can hook those up to the iPhone XR and start shooting. So really, I have a variety of cameras and I use them for different situations. So I've got the Osmo Pocket right here. I've got my iPhone XR right to the left of it. And the main reason that I'm using it together in this rig, well, there's a couple reasons, but the main reason is just to get that bigger screen so I can really see how things are framed up, what's in focus, use the face tracking a little bit easier. Um, so when I'm shooting the A-roll, the iPhone is there almost just like a monitor, kind of a dedicated monitor. It's also there because something about the way that the Osmo Pocket tracks your face, it doesn't like to center it right where I would want it. So I can come in here and use the on-screen controls to reframe where the Osmo Pocket is aiming and looking. So if I wanna use the rule of thirds, like I've been doing and kind of be over on the, the left side of the screen, I can do that um, just like that. And then it'll kind of keep that tracking in place, um, which is great. That's something that's a little bit harder to do if you're just using the Osmo all by itself. So in order to keep everything connected together, the Osmo and the iPhone, I'm using an accessory from PGY Tech that is the Phone Holder Plus, I think is what it's called. Again, I'm gonna link this stuff up down below. If I got it wrong, you can just check out the link. But it's a little bit more sturdy and stable than just using that one little accessory to plug into the lightning port. From, and that, that's all that holds it together. If you don't have that, this is sort of like a, a metal skeleton that keeps the two together. And it does two other things. It gives you a cold shoe up on the top. I'm gonna to talk about what I've got in that cold shoe in a second. And then it lets you mount your tripod uh, or you can put any kind of accessory on the bottom too that uses a quarter inch connector. So the PGY connector is actually essential to this setup because it's what lets me put this on my tripod and it just makes things a little bit sturdier. So DJI Osmo Pocket, iPhone, PGY Tech, and then over here on the left, I've got the Rode VideoMic Pro Plus hooked up. And that is because I want better audio for this video than just using the smaller shotgun mic from Rode that you see on a bunch of these mobile mini setups. So the way that I'm connecting this is using the official Osmo Pocket audio adapter. So it's got a USB-C on one side and then the audio jack on the other and no other accessories are needed. Um, it works very well. And I think you can tell the sound is pretty decent for being out here. Alternatively, I also have the Rode Wireless Go, that new system with the two mics. Um, you can just clip it onto your shirt um, and then clip that up here and use the same audio adapter and you just put that in the cold shoe and that works good too. Um, that works very good if you need to be like further away. If I need to go 20 feet back there and show you something, then I would use that. But when I'm this close to the camera, just a couple feet away, then Rode VideoMic Pro Plus has been great. And you could be wondering why this instead of something like the new Deity. I had the new Deity mic um, that's sort of the competitor to this. I haven't really tried it yet. It's got that stepless gain, which is really nice. The thing I like about this though, is that it's just like plug it in and forget about it. It's got the auto on function. The battery's gonna last all day. It's not gonna shut off on me when I'm not looking. Now, if you know anything about the Osmo Pocket, then you might be wondering how in the world did I rig this up in a way that I can use that big microphone but keep it out of the shot? Well, it's a very simple solution. I found a pretty cheap little handle that gives me some extra space in between where the Osmo Pocket is and where the camera is. So it's a dual shoe grip, and the reason it's called that is because it's a grip, it's got a handle, and it's got two cold shoes. So I mounted my mic on the top one, and if I go way over here, you can maybe see the microphone, maybe not, somewhere up here. Um, can't quite see on the screen. But either way, it does a really great job of keeping it out of the shot, and yet you can still obviously hear me very well. One thing that's kind of cool about this is that it does have that handle. So if I want to take this whole rig off of the tripod and actually like carry it around, it makes it a little bit easier to do that. And you can get just that much more steadier footage. The one bad thing about it is that it could fit just a little bit tighter. Things are a little bit loose, um, but it's not the end of the world. It's still very convenient. It's the best thing I've found so far. 
definitely better than using the video micro. All right, so I've got something sitting in the cold shoe above the iPhone, thanks to that PGY tech, and it's a light. It's the Apsure ALM9, I think. Uh, check the description, because I'll put the exact uh, right model down there. It's a tiny little travel light. I actually got this recommendation from Peter McKinnon several videos back, probably like last year or the year before that, um, if his channel's been around that long. It's a super great light. You can just recharge it. It doesn't take batteries. It gets very bright. And so for situations where you're shooting in a dark area and the Osmo doesn't have a great sensor for low light, this is definitely clutch. I've also got some ND filters, which is attached magnetically to the Osmo's lens. I don't have them on right now. I basically just about could because I don't think you can see the blue sky up there. Um, so I need to actually use them, but I have them and those do come in handy. Sometimes I get lazy and that's the reason why it's not on right now because I don't want to sit there messing with putting on like four different filters to find the exact right one and then the sun changes. I much prefer uh, an ND filter that you can just like rotate, but I don't think those work very well from what I've seen for the Osmo. When I first got the Osmo Pocket, I bought every accessory that I could for it. I uh, bought the wireless link, I bought all the different cages and holders. Uh, one of the essential things that I got was the screen protector and the gimbal lock from Polar Pro. And that thing is super clutch. Um, it doesn't fit in the case that came with the Osmo Pocket, but at least I can throw it in my bag and know that the gimbal is not going to get messed up when I'm just walking around or putting my bag down or maybe something bumps into it or something. It's a really, really important thing to have because, I don't know, the second day or something that I had the Osmo Pocket, I was all excited and I was using it in the studio and I dropped it maybe a foot and a half or two feet. Not very far, I think like a foot and a half. It landed on the gimbal head and it broke and I had to send it in. So I bought the warranty really quick for like 30 bucks and sent it back. I had it back in like seven days or something. It was actually pretty good customer service from BJI. Uh, but you wanna protect that gimbal. So the gimbal lock is not that expensive, very important, highly recommend. So the tripod that I'm using to hold this whole rig up is the Manfrotto carbon fiber tripod. I've got several tripods, monopods. This is the one that I bring with me when I go out of the studio. And the reason is obvious. It's light and it's strong. So I can put this on my backpack and it's not gonna break my back carrying it around. It's still heavy, like, I mean, it adds some weight, but it's nothing like an aluminum tripod. Such a huge upgrade. One thing I like about using this Manfrotto setup is that I've got so much other Manfrotto gear that I can easily use this plate to clip into other accessories like the Moza Air 2 gimbal, for instance. So it's just widely compatible with my personal ecosystem. One annoying thing is if I wanna use this tripod plate for something else or whatever, I gotta detach it. And if I'm traveling, I don't like to carry like a screwdriver or something that's not gonna get through security. So I have a really great um, credit card sized accessory. I'm not sure what it's called, but I'll link it up down for you guys. That makes it really easy to screw things on and off. Highly recommend that too. Hey, how's it going? Obviously, I heard about the new Peak Design um, travel tripod. Haven't had my hands on that yet, but that looks even better because it's so much more compact. Um, definitely would consider backing that on Kickstarter, unless Peak wants to just send it for some testing while I'm at WWDC. Speaking of Peak Design though, there's two Peak Design bags that I'm always bringing with me, and it depends on how much gear I need to bring and if I wanna travel light and just get something done quickly, or if I'm really going like on a hardcore shoot and I need to bring a bunch of stuff. The first one is just the Everyday Backpack, I believe it's called. And shout out to Peak for sending this a couple years ago. If you go to any tech event, you see like a million of these everywhere. It's because people love them. They're so versatile. So that's what I got with me right now. I can strap the tripod out onto the back and it's no problem at all to carry that with me. I kind of have a compartment for audio stuff. I got a compartment for this rig right here on the top where it doesn't get smashed or torn apart. Um, and then what else? I keep like my moment lenses, all the little accessories um, in the third spot. And there's just like a bunch of pockets on the side. It's super comfortable. That's something that I really like about it. Um, so that is highly recommended. Definitely check that out. The other peak bag that I take with me sometimes is the Everyday Messenger. And that's just like, if I just need to get out and do something really quick, um, that's what comes with me. I still bring my tripod with me when I'm using that. And I can just set that on the strap and carry it around. It's like no big deal. Very comfortable to walk around like that. Um, this rig fits in there perfectly. Just attach the mic. 
stick that in the side compartment, have one divider, and everything else fits on the other side. It's great. So yeah, that is pretty much it. If you guys have any questions about this setup and about this rig, I think it's very unique. I haven't seen anything like this for the Osmo Pocket anywhere on YouTube. For me, it's the best audio combined with this cameraman-like face tracking um, and the size, the convenience. It's all super great. So I'm gonna hang out in the comments at least for the first couple days um, and monitor the questions and try to hook you guys up with the answers. Again, everything is linked down in the description. Don't forget you can follow at Daily Tech, spelled daily, T-E-K-K, -K, on Instagram and Twitter, and I'll catch you guys in the next video. I got one more coming out before WWDC. Later.